Hello and welcome to the Seaweed Sofa, where we sit down with some of the most interesting participants at this year's World Water Week to learn more about the array of water-related issues being discussed this week in Stockholm. My name is Eric Pagley, a host of the Seaweed Sofa, which is now streaming live on the Seaweed Media Hub. And the name of this session is Innovative Sustainable Water Solutions for Coffee, Pro for coffee Processing. Uh, much of the discussion will center on community milling for sustainable quality coffee in Colombia and uh, in East Africa which has proved beneficial in terms of coffee farmer livelihood improvement, water stewardship, and coffee quality. And joining me for this session, we have Jerome Perez, uh, Head of Sustainability at Nestle Nespresso. We have Miriam Sainz, uh, an Economic Development Specialist with over 10 years of experience designing inclusive agricultural business models. She leads TechnoServe's strategic partnership with Nestle Nespresso. And finally, we have Juan Carlos Ardila, who's the founder of Cafe Export, who's involved in the implementation of Nespresso's AAA Sustainable Quality Program and a supplier of coffee to Nespresso. So welcome you all to the CV Sofa. Good to have you here. Um, Jerome, perhaps we could start with you. Um, how have the water challenges affected the way your company does business? And what innovative models have been particularly successful in your opinion? Uh, in fact, uh, water quality is, uh, is critical to produce good quality coffee and is also essential for a good quality of life for the, the coffee farmers and the, 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 the family and the community of, uh, of the farmers. So at the really early stage, Nespresso integrated into its strategy a water stewardship strategy and, and, and more broadly a, a sustainability and coffee farming strategy. Uh, implementing uh, the, the AAA Sustainable Quality Program back to 2003. And uh, this program, which is the, the, the main sourcing strategy of the company, is now uh, active with 350 agronomists on the field, reaching 70,000 farmers. And uh, around 300 million have been invested uh, since 2006 specifically in uh, sustainable farming and, and water stewardship in the, in the program. When it's about uh, innovation, I think first it's not necessarily about innovative solutions. Somet sometimes it's about being practical and doing the right thing to do. It can be training farmers, it can be implementing water infrastructure when the farmers are processing the, the, the coffee or for the, for the household also to treat the water. Uh, it can be shade trees, so it's not necessarily innovative in, in, in that sense. Uh, but sometimes also uh, there are some innovation and, and, and for example uh, in some country and specifically in Colombia and also in Africa, uh, we had the, 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 the proof one that when the, the small farmers are, are processing the cherries in the farm, it's really more difficult to, uh, to implement water infrastructure to treat the water and micro central mills are representing a, a very efficient uh, option. And in that case, uh, we, we had uh, the experience of very uh, satisfying uh, micro central meal solution, bringing a lot of benefits when it's about water stewardship. And can you tell us about um, how you see the water challenges in those regions where you source coffee? And where do you have the most challenges for water? Well, I think the, 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 the water uh, challenge is probably mainly during the, the, the cherry processing mm. part of the process when we are transforming the cherries into what we call parchment mm. to, be, to produce the green coffee which will be exported to, um, to factories uh, to produce the coffee that the consumers will, uh, will get at home. Uh, and, in, and when it's about countries, it's, uh, we, are, we are careful to, to manage water in every of the 12 countries where Nespresso sold the coffee. And we are particularly active where we have very small farmers. Uh, and it's the case, for example, of Colombia and Africa, where we are going to, uh, to discuss a little bit more today. And what do you see as the key learning so far from this experience? I would say that the key learning is specifically when it's about when it's about water in general, and uh, but when it's about uh, collective milling, it's 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 even more uh, true. Is that you need to have the engagement of the of the of the community. You need to work with the community. This is the first the first key learning. If you try to have a water stewardship strategy and you are not doing this in line with the farmers, 
and, uh, and uh, the farming community, it cannot be successful. So this is the first thing. The second thing probably is, is related to, to collaboration because the, the, the challenges are significant, the investment also are important and the level of expertise is high and it's through collective uh, action and partnership that you can, you can get really the, the, the added value of your action on the field. Juan Carlos, perhaps uh, we can hear from your experiences uh, on the ground there in Colombia. I mean, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about the uh, water stewardship uh, solutions that have been, Im been uh, implemented in Colombia? Sure, thank you. Uh, first of all, may I say that in Colombia we have half a million families dedicated to growing coffee. Growing coffee in Colombia is part of the culture and is key to the economic development of, of the country. Um, we do wash the coffee after fermentation. It is critical. Colombia produces washed Arabica. Then when you have to wash the coffee after fermentation, it uses a lot of water uh, and it pollutes a lot of water. So if you have half a million families processing individually um, the, the coffee and using water on those half million facilities, the use and abuse is enormous. Mm -hmm. We decided with our partners, uh, Tecno Seven Espresso mainly, but a big coalition that includes the Colombian government, the Andes Cooperative, the Regional Coffee Federation, uh, Corantioquia and many other organizations get together to solve this problem that was bigger than any of us. We did create a centralized facility where we could um, manage the problem in a better way. The results are incredible. It was one of the first central mills created in Colombia and now the effects are being multiplied and scaled up. We still have challenges, uh, but this pilot was so important to let us know that it is possible to think differently in terms of water use and water disposal. Uh, the results now are that most of the cooperatives, we have 30 of them in Colombia, want to build center mills, but we are struggling to, to, to construct the business case to make it viable. Um, in any case, the landscape is changing because instead of having half a million farms dropping, dropping water, we have now decentralized facility that creates so much value, increase the quality of the coffee, uh, saves a lot of uh, water usage, and also liberates times for the, value, for the families, creating social value and environmental value and economic value. It's the perfect case of sustainability in the three dimensions and all this around water and an innovative solution that was built among uh, partners in a multi-stakeholders coalition. Re regarding the, the, the social value, when we, when we implemented the, the project in Haldin, the Central Mill, uh, we, we discovered a very unexpected, I would say, benefit. We were discussing with uh, Don Roberto, who is the, the, the leader of the community there, who was really supportive to, to manage the project. And he told me that uh, uh, before the Central Mill, it was, it was difficult for, for him to, to leave the farm in the evening, for example, because after the harvest, they are processing the cherries and the, the, the cherries become the, the, the green coffee. And the green coffee, uh, they keep it in the farm and it represents uh, money for them. It's value, it's the value they have in the farm. And they were afraid to leave the, the, the farm because they were <laughs> afraid that someone is going to come or it was happening that the people were entering in the farms, stealing the, 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 the green bean. And, uh, and for them, uh, it was the, the, the loss of the, the entire harvest. And now, with the central meal, they are bringing directly after few hours, because you, you cannot keep the cherries in the farm, otherwise you are losing the quality. Uh, there is a fermentation process, and if you want to keep the quality, you need to treat and transform the cherries immediately, after few hours. So they are bringing the cherries, they sell the cherries, and now they are totally free to go in the evening in the city and uh, without being afraid that someone is going to come and to steal the, the harvest. So, and this was absolutely unexpected as a social benefit. And of, of course, adding many things that they are not ad, uh, uh, processing the cherries by night uh, after the, the harvest uh, bec because the, the, all of this is managed directly and consistently by the, by the, by the milling. Probably saved a few marriages that way as well, huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. And Miriam, perhaps you could tell us about uh, your organization, TechnoServe, and some of your work with um, community milling in East Africa. Yes, uh, so in East Africa, we, we also face some water challenges in coffee. Um, uh, for example, in Ethiopia and Kenya, where we work with Nespresso as well, 
There, the, the challenge is not so much um, that farmers process individually. Actually, central milling already is well established there. It's the, it's the traditional practice. The problem we have there is how they, they source the water and the treatment of this water. So if you take uh, the Sudamo region of Ethiopia, for example, that region produces about two-thirds of Ethiopia's washed coffee and it has a very distinctive cup profile. So this area is critical for farmer, uh, the coffee there is critical for farmer livelihoods, it's very important. And uh, the traditional coffee processing practices there put a lot of stress on water because they, they source water from the, from the rivers and at any given time during harvest there's about 200 wet mills operating at the same time. So they sometimes, uh, they typically will draw down about two billion liters of water from the river and of course, that river is the one that feeds water for the communities in the area, for household needs, for irrigation, for all kinds of purposes. And the problem is that not only they draw down this, this water, but then uh, after processing the coffee, uh, the, a lot of, um, about 600 million liters of water get, of effluent gets discharged back into the river and contaminates the water further downstream. So uh, when that happens, uh, the, the water of the river becomes unusable for the families. Uh, it becomes dark and bad smell, and so they can no longer use it for, um, for irrigating their, their crops or for their animals. And of course, this typically um, affects most the vulnerable populations, the women, the elderly, children, who are the ones that have to fetch water, and they end up having to go longer distances. So when we faced uh, this challenge, we looked for, um, for solutions that, were, uh, that would make business sense for, for the central mills, that would be uh, inexpensive and locally available and ideally low tech. So we looked around uh, and we came across uh, vetiver grass, which is a grass that is used in, in South Asia uh, for combating soil erosion because it has very deep roots and it's very absorbent. So we came up with a, with a model that uh, basically had two steps for the processing. One is separating the pulp, the solid waste, from the wastewater, uh, which enables you to then compost the pulp and use it as organic fertilizer at the farms. And then the wastewater flows down to a wetland that is planted with this vetiver grass. And as the water flows down the wetland, the, the roots absorb the, the wastewater. And it basically, uh, by, by the time it's gone through the whole wetland, it's almost all gone. And if there's any water left, it's then evaporated in a, in a tank. So it's very effective at, at reducing the, the discharge of effluent. Uh, and when we looked at the quality of the water in the river, um, but through independent researchers, they, they figured that before the wetland was there, the level of contamination in the river tripled during harvest. And after two years of the wetlands, uh, that increase in contamination had almost completely disappeared. So the families there were really excited because they could continue to use the river as a source of water during harvest and didn't have to go to other places. And it, it brought multiple benefits. Is there any sort of a cross-fertilization of knowledge between these different uh, locations in terms of community milling from Colombia, Ethiopia? It seems like you're really uh, implementing a very global outlook, taking grasses from Asia. I mean, how, do, how is this knowledge exchanged? Is it through TechnoServe and, and you? or? Yeah, so I mean, through Nespresso and their partners, we work together in multiple countries and in Colombia as well. Uh, we, we also work to establish another central mill, um, which is a similar approach that Juan Carlos was explaining. And the focus on that one uh, was more to, to prove the financial um, sustainability of the wet mill uh, and to be able to, ex to show how we can attract uh, external capital and provide a return for these investments so that uh, you can actually replicate that further. So we do bring uh, cross-fertilize between the different Nespresso clusters and areas. N Nespresso um, initiated a few years ago a project in South Sudan, and uh, we launched a coffee it's called Suluja at South Sudan, also in partnership with Technoser. And we created uh, uh, five cooperatives, and to, and to start the, 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 the cooperative, we, we brought the technology from Colombia uh, we brought the machine and the system for to, depul depul for to manage the depulping of the cherries uh, from, from the Colombian technology. So, so th what you're saying is relevant. It's, a, it's about uh, building on what is working wherever we are implementing the project. We take what, is, what it works and, uh, and we use it. And in fact, in South Sudan, we, we built on our learnings from Ethiopia and Kenya as well, and the experience in Colombia to look for 
uh, solutions that were really adapted to the local context. So in South Sudan, um, uh, the context was, uh, the communities were very spread out and they were new to coffee processing. Uh, it was the first time they were washing the coffee ever. Traditionally, the coffee there is just sun-dried. So we wanted to find a, a wet milling approach that would be low cost and easy for them to manage. Uh, also, if TechnoServe and Espresso disappear tomorrow, that they could continue to use them on their own. And so we designed almost like a wet mill in a box uh, with local materials and, and the machine coming from Colombia. And it was quite a, an interesting experience for us as well. And I think we will leverage that as well in other areas that have similar, similar context. What sort of uh, barriers do you tend to encounter, whether it's between some sort of cross-fertilization or implementation in certain communities? Is there any, any problems that you've, you see recur from location to location? So I would say, uh, typically, in, uh, as in development, the, the biggest barrier is maybe not so much the technology itself, but behavior change and getting uh, people to, to understand the need to change the way they've been doing things for so many years. And so uh, our way at TechnoServe to try and, and help them get through that hurdle is really to focus on the, on the business uh, incentive and the business case for changing their behavior and for making these investments. So um, in this case of the central mills, uh, both in Ethiopia, Kenya, as well as in Colombia, we, we really look into the, the economic incentive for the, the owners of the central mill to invest in these, um, to make these investments. And, and so in, in Ethiopia, for example, um, during, during the harvest time, when the, when the water, um, when the water is um, treated into, goes into the rivers and pollutes uh, the water for the communities, many times the government closes down these wet mills. So they end up losing income during part of the harvest. So through these investments in the vetiver grassland, um, they, they're able to maintain their wet mills open throughout the harvest and maintain that income. Cultural change is uh, probably the, 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 main, the main driver. I guess uh, Juan yeah. Carlos can, can share a little bit on this because he, he knows this very well, but uh, is it about the, 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 the way you, 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 you work, uh, processing the cherries in a centralized way instead of in the farm, having the feeling that in a way you are transferring the, the, the quality of your product uh, to someone else? Is is, uh, is not easy. So you you have to, you have to prove that it works, and there are many benefits. But it, it's it's also true when we speak about water stewardship. For example, shade trees is, is is really important, and uh, and and you have to to show that uh, having shade to produce the coffee is not bad if it's managed properly, and it's bringing so many benefits for soil, for water, for biodiversity, for the quality of the coffee. But if you are in a country where culturally they have the, 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 the belief that you need the sun and no trees, you need to, you need to, to support, to train, to explain, to prove that, uh, that it works. And uh, I don't know, on this yeah. topic, Juan Carlos, the cultural yes. change is uh, one of your main... That I the farmers say. are usually afraid of losing independence in the processing. And if they shut down their small facility at the farm and depend on a... On a and a third party to process the coffee, they might lose independence. That's why implementing this at the cooperative level have, has been very powerful because the cooperative belongs to them. So they are transferring this independence and power to process their coffee to a third party which they are part of. So it has been successful. These central mills are very interesting for cooperatives. They have a lot of non-financial returns. They increase the competitiveness of the cooperatives. And when you build the case uh, for a cooperative, it makes a lot of sense. And sometimes for a private investor, it doesn't if you're looking only for financial returns. It creates so much value in so many dimensions that sometimes are no financial, but still is value in itself. Um, that's why building the business case, we are, we are refining the business case because it has to be uh, financiable and affordable but we have to on top of this value creation. There was a very interesting case of a constraint we faced when we opened the first central mill as a pilot. Um, and this is something we, no one could see. In Colombia, there's a cultural tradition whereby when you process the coffee at the farm, the byproducts, the coffee is not up to standards, is called pasilla, and this coffee is given to the women uh, so they have pocket money. And it has been going like that for centuries. It happened in my home. My father has been a farmer and my mother got the, the money from the pasillas. Um, 
all of a sudden we, we created this centralized station, the women were left of this pocket money. We did a nice inauguration and then the coffee was not coming the weeks after. So we tried to see what was going on. And, and the women were blocking the deliveries to the central mill because they were losing this income. We have to create a strategy to, uh, to find a solution so they could uh, create, also have an alternative income now that these soup products were gone. We train them as, as tourist guides, we incorporate them also in, in other activities where they could generate an income. But it's a typical case of you lift a stone and you untap another problem, mm -hmm. but it's the way to advance. Uh, but it was very interesting as a cultural eff effect that we had to overcome and we succeeded in doing that. Yeah, with other women on board, it doesn't sound like this central milling would go anywhere, so very good you found other solutions. Um, now, um, what are the greatest challenges you've experienced in terms of scaling up? And where do you see the greatest opportunities from doing so? Um, there are a few, uh, few new pilots in Colombia, particularly the Andes Cooperative created a second and a third central mill with different business models. Still, the financing has been a constraint because of what I mentioned before, trying to find and, and uh, incorporate the value creation and make it financially viable. That's why we need support in wider uh, scope projects to finance these central mills uh, because they create so much value for the communities and there's such a big impact in water. So financing is a big constraint because the capital expenditure required Enable to be able to amortize it, uh, you need to incorporate a special model of valuation. Yeah, that I would so say is the main constraint. Uh, yeah, I would say that, that's the main constraint for scaling as well. Um, so I think the, the first few wet mills, uh, central mills in Colombia were, were really key to demonstrate the operational viability, which was a new thing in Colombia at the time. But I think now it's moving from that to be able to make them investable businesses where we can attract uh, capital and provide a return because that will then enable really the scale up. And I think what we're trying to do together with all the partners with Nespresso is to look at different business models for different kinds of context in Colombia and see what is the right uh, size and what is the type of the right um, blended finance approach that would work in different situations. And hopefully develop some kind of blueprint that can then be used right broadly in, in Colombia to solve in the fact issue of we, water. We already built a second mill in, in Colombia in partnership, Nespresso in partnership with TechnoServe and also with Acumen, uh, which is an impact investor, uh, to try to see how we can, in a way, transfer the, the, the sustainability, but the, 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 the economic sustainab sustainability of the, of the model to the, the, the farming community in the country because there are perhaps, I don't know, hundreds of micro mills that are necessary in the country to manage properly the, the, the water for the half a million coffee growers that there are in the, in the country, even if of course Nespresso is, not, uh, is only partnering with uh, 40,000 farmers, which is, not, which is already quite uh, significant. Uh, and this is why uh, two years ago we we set up uh, an innovation fund, Nespresso, to, in a way, to uh, create an independent entity from uh, the Nespresso company and to facilitate uh, uh, the attraction of, of finance uh, so that we can, in a way, uh, facilitate the implementation on many of many other uh, micro mills in the country. And, and this is uh, probably uh, one of the, mest, the, the, the the biggest, I would say, challenge we have when it's about scalability. It's about uh, identifying the right business case and, and attracting investors that are ready to, to, to support the investment of the, the mill so that it can live uh, by itself, I would say, as a, as a project. Are these investors generally local investors or are these uh, are these uh, large banks, or what kind of investors do you, do you tend to uh, seek out? The example we have with Acumen is that they are, they are international investors. They are investing in uh, social uh, impact, so they, are, they identify projects that make sense on the social and environmental point of view, and then they are ready to take uh, a bigger risk, in a way, to support the project. 
locally, uh, I don't know if you if you see specific investors that could be. It could be the cooperative. You were speaking about the cooperative. Probably the cooperative can be, and the farming community also. They are participating. We are not mentioning this enough, but uh, in the two meals that we implemented, we have also the support of the cooperative and of of, of the farmers. In uh, which, like I was saying, it's critical because if you if you don't build this in collaboration. Uh, and the support of the, the, the farming community, it, it, it's not possible to, to manage like that. I, I'm just um, curious to hear more about your, your collaboration here between the three of you, the organizations you represent. It seems quite fascinating. You have an enormous amount of on the ground knowledge and experience, it seems like. How, do you, how does this uh, collaboration work on a practical level? You meet here at the World Water Week. Do you meet on location in places like Colombia and Ethiopia? Or how does this, how does this go about? Yeah, but uh, I think we, uh, first, it's about uh, long-term <laughs> relationship. It's, uh, it's about, and, and this is, uh, I, can say, uh, I can say, one of really the, 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 the main approach uh, for Nespresso when it's about partnership. It's when, when we start to work with a partner, it's for years. I think we, are, we have been working together, I think we were together in 2010 to initiate the central meal, and uh, we were already working before. So I think it's this is the first, the first thing. There is no no secret. You need to work together a lot. I would say a lot because the, to implement central meal it takes a lot of time, and it's not the only project we are managing for water, but in, for sustainability in general. And then uh, we we also have different kind of expertise. Definitely, Nespresso is really strong in uh, selecting quality, supporting in producing quality, marketing the product, creating a product, accessing to consumers. This is where we are really strong. And in a way also, because we are proposing a coffee with high value that the consumers are recognizing and the consumers are ready to pay a certain value for this coffee, we have the means also to reinvest back into the value chain uh, part of this value, which is the, the approach uh, coming from Nestle that we call the, the creating shared value approach. You, uh, in a way, you create a product which is going out of commodity that the, the, the consumers are valuing, paying a higher price, uh, giving a higher value to that. And then this is creating a virtuous circle because you can reinvest back. And, uh, and these are, in a way, the, the, the areas where Nespresso is supporting the partnership. And then we have expert people who take no service highly expert in acting and helping small producers and uh, uh, small farmers to develop business so that they can make a living from it. And operationally, they are really strong. And then we have partners like uh, Juan Carlos who have a very strong knowledge and connection with the, the, the farming community, with the cooperative, knowing perfectly the, the coffee. Juan Carlos is a coffee farmer. His father was a coffee farmer. so. This is how it, it's about diversity. It's like, uh, it's like everything in life, being diverse and bringing different skills. We are stronger. It's a, the, the principle of a team, it's a team, whatever, or uh, belonging to Nespresso or not, or whatever the, the organization is, uh, it remains a team at the end. And this is, this is the way it works. I don't know how you see yeah. this. But, uh, I would say we are so lucky to have so much water in Colombia uh, that our farmers and ourselves, we believe it's an infinite resource. But through this project, we realize how much we are dependent on water for processing our coffee. We have to take care of it, use it efficiently, and reuse it and, and, and clean it before dropping it to others. This is creating a new culture. This is changing the way of thinking in Colombia for the coffee growers. And this pilot has untapped a new awareness that is being followed. So it, it, we became a game changer. And I think do, now there's the hype. Everyone wants to build a central mill. We'll probably end up scaling this solution. We, we need the support of the financial community to get this done. But this will create a new reality in terms of water use in Colombia. I think uh, just to add on, on the collaboration, um, I think also we, we challenge each other. So for example, it was Nespresso who challenged us to go and work, explore coffee in South Sudan. Uh, we would have never gone there if it hadn't been for Nespresso asking us, why don't you go and, and see what can we do there? And, and we did, and it ended up um, developing the, the Suluja capsule, which was highly successful and impactful for farmers. 
So I think together we, we challenge each other, we, we ask each other to push uh, and go further and take risks, and that's how we, we drive innovation um, and learn from each other. But as Nespresso, I, I would say we are really lucky because we have, I think we estimated that we are working with uh, around 50 partners and uh, we have very, very uh, strong, interesting and uh, committed partners. And this is uh, really making the difference at the end uh, to, to be successful in the project you, you implement. It's a very powerful partnership, I would say. Sorry? And it's, it's a very powerful partnership and Nespresso make us better. They're very demanding. The quality they use is supremely uh, complex to, to, to get and our farmers have been demanded so much but supported so much. So I think the principle of our collaboration is putting a high vision, high standards, working long term, but also a lot of support to get there. Uh, because we prefer this, that we are putting pressure to higher standards with support than being subjects of charity because for farmers it's very important to keep the pride on what they do and achieve everyday new standards through partners, uh, support to TechnoServe and, and demands from Nespresso that I do believe have made us better and more competitive worldwide. Yeah. That's a fascinating collaboration and uh, thank you very much for joining us here on the CB Sofa. I learned a lot from, from the three of you in very different perspectives and uh, really interesting on the ground experiences. So thank you once again for joining us here today. Thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to the CV Sofa. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the World Water Week.